So these uh, results look really strong. Uh, 35.3% same store sales growth, 493% increase in digital uh, business. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, you know, you got the figures correct. And hey, before we get into it, if I could just say, if I may, um, I want to be really sensitive to the fact that while I'm sitting here talking to you about Ace's record financial results, there's a lot of people sitting at home that are hurting. And there's a lot of businesses that are still suffering. Um, and I'm really sensitive to that. And yet at the same time, uh, it would feel like a total act of ingratitude for me not to thank the ACE team for these incredible results, their grit, their determination. Heck, they're serving hearts in what was arguably the most difficult, unusual, and yet perhaps rewarding quarter in ACE's 96-year history. I, I would say ACE shines brightest in the darkest hour, and I just couldn't be more pleased with and proud of our team and our local owners for serving so well and producing the kind of numbers you just talked about. Yes, yeah, so I think there's a lot of light that you can shed, uh, not just on ACE itself, but on the state of the consumer, of the economy. Um, what in your plans did you have to accelerate in order to meet the kind of demand that you saw as an essential business? And what is your investment for the rest of the year in some of those systems it's going to take to continue? Yeah, good question. So let's look back first. I think there's clearly three very big things that drove uh, an incredible quarter with 35% comp growth and a 493% increase in our digital business. And it started with the fact that a huge number of people were forced to stay home. And when people are home, they use it, they preserve it, and they improve it a lot more than when they're not. Drove a lot of business. Second is this distortion. There, there's a huge bifurcation in discretionary spending. I mean, on one end of the continuum, there was just a tremendous amount of businesses that were forced to close. Uh, sectors were essentially shut down, and your, your heart goes out to them. And that basically shifted discretionary dollars to the other end of the continuum, and that's where race was. We were declared an essential business. And I can tell you that that was both a blessing uh, and a burden. Uh, and then the third thing is I think there was really good execution, a, a lot of wonderful pivoting from our local ACE owners to ensure safety of their people and their customers. Uh, we call it pandemic store operations, while at the same time executing the strategy, which, which is service, convenience, and quality. That's our play, you know, best service, most convenient, and highest quality. And they were able to do all that and produce these numbers and the combination of those three things um, produced tremendous results, um, stunning almost. Uh, yeah, John, I guess uh, the question would be to you, are you a believer in this idea that the giants are going to get so big that they're going to eventually wash out what we, I guess what we're calling mom and pops, or is the boom to uh, renovate your home and, and do stuff around the house as you're, as you're quarantining so large that everybody will benefit just to varying degrees? There's going to be shakeout, no question, but, you know, listen, we... Uh, we are a David and Goliath story, and there's no question that we are David. Uh, we represent small, mostly family-run businesses around the world. In an aggregate, we're strong, uh, but it's really small family businesses. And I think the results from the last quarter are a testament that the little guy, uh, local ownership with the local understanding of their community and understanding what service, safety, and convenience now means. It got redefined in the quarter. It got amplified. And our stores were benefactors of that for sure, but they really capitalized it. So I, I think it's a testament that there's a place for the little guy, even though the Goliaths of the world are getting very, very large. No question about it. Um, it's the benefit of the little guy working together, and that's really what A stands for. So we we're fortunate to be in that space, but there's no question, Carl, there's going to be a shakeout. John, it's clear from your, your second quarter numbers that you were clearly a beneficiary of being considered essential during the quarter. And you mentioned in your statement, you mentioned just a few moments ago that it was also a burden. I'm curious what you mean by that. Yeah, listen, it, it is a, a far superior place to be than on the other side of the continuum. I don't want to be confused about that at all. But it placed an incredible amount of strain on our systems, our supply chain, and our people. Uh, the, the amount of money and effort and work to ensure a safe environment. You know, our highest priority is protect our people. Uh, and to do that is an incredible amount of work. So to get this huge amount of volume in a short period of time creates a tremendous amount of burden on everything. And, and most notably, we have a fatigued and fragile workforce. You know, they, they don't get to work from home. They're essential. You know, they got to show up for work 
and, and operate safely for their community. And that is a burden. But at the same time, it's it's been a blessing because the alternative is, you know, furloughs, firings, rent abatement, and in some cases, Chapter 11. And we feel very fortunate to be on the other end of that continuum. But it didn't come without its challenges, which is why I'm so proud of our owners for pivoting and handling those well.